Okay, so when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the Zoom meeting. Okay, so I'm going to ask if there would be somebody who would like to share. You just do this and then uh, you'll be connected. So who would like to start? Brett, ah, very good. Okay. Hello friends. Um, I found deep peace today, deep peace. Um, just one second, one second. Um, am I, I'm not getting a view of Brett actually. He's speaking, but I've got the screen covered in all the other people. Just one minute, Brett. Yeah. I'd like to be able to see you. So the gallery is there. Now I get asking for Brett. He's there, but that's really little technical things. Okay. Okay, good. Can you also see me, Brett? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. Okay. Yes, um, just some deep peace today. Um, deeply peaceful, actually. Uh, some thoughts wandered in, but then they just dissipated like a pebble. The ripples disappeared and then the peace came back. So it was very peaceful. Uh, All right. Better than last week, may I say. <laughs> okay. Well, you seem to be a bit surprised, you know, that uh, it wasn't peaceful. Um, but it, it, it was so peaceful, let's say, you were a bit surprised maybe. But... Yeah, I think I was. Um, it was after last week, obviously, like I expressed, um, a lot of things have happened to me this year. And um, particularly my relationship ending has been quite difficult. And last week, a lot of the thoughts of my previous partner was in were in there and they were resonating but I think over the week I've managed to do quite a lot of meditation and uh, I've managed to bring myself back into an equilibrium if you like um, and I meditated or tried to meditate before we had the meeting last week um, but this week I left it and I thought I wanted to do the meditation with you so it was kind of nice to have that resonate energy and um that may have helped me bring that bit of peace to myself and uh you know yeah right i'm going to tell you something funny you know because you you're sitting in this rather um special chair mm. and it has a cushion yeah i don't know if you're aware but it looks like you have two very big ears yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, i mean being english myself i'm always looking for a bit of a joke you know no, it's anyway, my, it comes off. <laughs> right, right, right. But the way you're wearing it, it, it yeah. certainly uh, has the effect of, uh, yeah. Makes me look like a space alien. <laughs> right, right. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Maybe somebody else would like to share. And I'm just going to share, okay. So I started with a lot of tiredness somehow. I was really, really tired. And I focused, the strongest thing was still the stillness. So I focused on that. And somehow I'm completely awake now. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, it totally faded away. I don't feel tired at all. And I, yeah, came all into right. deep silence. And there's I no don't know why, there. but it, it reminds me of uh, many years ago when I was living in, uh, well, I wasn't living in his ashram, but I was living close by Osho's ashram and I would go every day. And uh, in those early days, I was... Uh, attending lots of meditations through the day and then meeting people at lunchtime maybe and so on 
sometimes I was doing a bit of therapy. And then by about five o'clock, I could often feel pretty tired. And then every day at five o'clock, everybody uh, stopped working, stopped uh, doing therapy, and everybody came to the meditation hall. And there was this very big um, active meditation. And I used to drag myself there. Literally, I would be like, oh, God, I'm so tired. How can I do it? You know. And then after maybe half an hour, then like your experience, I would feel wonderful and very open. And the energy was, you know, completely changed. So um, if, when we feel very tired, we're probably making ourselves tired by having too many thoughts. Maybe you have other reasons, but anyway. Okay. No, I noticed. Yeah, cool. if I'm a lot outside with, yeah, with my focus and not so much inside, I get more tired. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Maybe somebody I haven't spoken to. Uh, I don't know whether I've met Alberta. Would you like to share, Alberta? I think we haven't met yet. Uh, sí. Uh, gracias. Uh, Thank for you. La, for the invitation. Very much for the invitation. Uh, hace cinco años. Five years ago. Uh, yo vi unos videos de John David. I saw some videos of John David. Y también he comprado, eh, tengo los libros de John David, dos libros. And I have the books of John David. Y pues me he enamorado mucho de la vida de Ramana Maharshi. And I have, and I have fallen in love with the life of Ramana Maharshi. Eh, estoy muy contento, muy feliz de estar en esta reunión. I'm so happy, delightful to be in this meeting tonight. Eh, quiero aprender a profundizar más. I want to learn and get deeper. Y quiero que John David me acompañe en este viaje espiritual. And I would like John David to be with me in this spiritual journey. Eh, okay, that's very nice. Yeah. Okay. Está muy bueno eh, esto. Gracias y espero conocerlo personalmente. Thank you and I would like to meet you personally. Okay. So I have a good news for you because um, two years ago we published uh, a very special book from Ramana Maharshi. Tengo buenas noticias para ti. Hace unos años publicamos un libro de Ramana Maharshi. And this book is been, has been translated into Spanish. Y este libro ha sido traducido al español. And it's almost finished, almost finished. Está casi terminado. So in yes. a month or two, we'll be uh, printing and distributing that book in Spain. En uno o dos meses estaremos imprimiendo y distribuyendo este libro en España. And this okay. is a selection of... of dialogues that happened between Ramana Maharshi and his visitors to his ashram. Es una selección de diálogos que pasaron entre Ramana Maharshi y sus discípulos en el ashram. And uh, at the moment I'm preparing another book, but anyway you'll be very happy I think to get this book in Spanish. Ahora estoy preparando otro libro, pero creo que va a estar muy contento de recibir este libro en español muy pronto. Okay. This, this material was spoken in 1936 when Ramana was about 56 years old. Este material es de 1936 when, cuando Ramana Maharshi was, tenía 56 años. Yeah. Okay. And where do you live in Spain? ¿Dónde vives en España? Uh, no, yo vivo, uh, yo soy colombiano de nacimiento. Pero vivo en Canadá. Okay, I'm actually from Colombia, but I live in Canada. 
Oh, you live in Canada. Okay. Well, I'm happy to come to Canada. You know, if you can bring a few friends together, I'll be there. John David, le encantaría ir a Canadá. Si tienes algunos amigos, él le gustaría visitarte. Aquí lo esperamos. Bienvenido. <laughs> I'm waiting for you here. You're very welcome here. Okay. In the summer, maybe next summer when it's nice and warm, because I know it can be very cold in the winter. En el verano cuando sea un poco más tibio porque es muy eh, frío en el invierno. Yes, demasiado frío. Sí, it's just too, <laughs> too, too, too cold here. Right, winter. right, yeah. Okay, well, we'll try to get together, yeah, yeah. Muy Good. bien, pues nos encontraremos. Yeah. Sí, y le puedes decir que yo leí dos libros que John David escribió. Eh, personas extraordinarias y así habló Papaji. Yo los leí y me gustaron mucho. So he read two books, the book of Papaji, The Amazing Grace, and the other one with all of the masters, the interviews of the master, right. and, and he was very pleased with all those books. Okay, okay good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but you're going to really enjoy this uh, book from Ramana Maharshi's teachings. Vas a disfrutar mucho este nuevo libro que va a salir de las enseñanzas de Ramana Maharshi. The, the text is so strong. El texto es tan fuerte. That several people have told me when they read it one or two pages, their body starts to shake. Que muchas personas me han dicho que cuando empiezan a leer las primeras páginas, el cuerpo empieza como a temblar. Ok. <laughs> ok. <laughs> ok. And would you like to share something from the meditation we just had together? Me gustaría compartir algo de la breve meditación que acabamos de hacer. Eh, sí. Eh, yo... Eh... Al comienzo divagó un poquito mi mente. Yeah, my mind was wandering at the beginning. Y al comienzo pude estar más calmado, sentí un poco de tranquilidad. And then I was quiet, I was uh, much peaceful inside of me. Y mucho right. la imagen de Ramana Ramaharsi lo tenía mucho en la mente. And in my mind, I had this image of uh, Ramana Maharshi. Good, good. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Muchas gracias, Alberto. Gracias. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So maybe somebody else. Have we got anybody? Ah, oh, Peter. Peter, I haven't. I don't think I've spoken to you. Did we meet before? First time. First time, okay. Yeah. I've been aware of you for sort of a few years um, in my general sort of seeking, and uh, I had an invite this week, so I thought, well, why not? Okay, good. So, Are you English? I am, yeah. And you're living in England? I am, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. But we didn't meet. I. I came to England some years ago, briefly, but maybe we didn't meet that time. No, no, I've not been to any of your um, satsangs or, or retreats or anything, but I, I kind of looked at the, the India one a few years ago and was sort of considering that quite seriously. Um, but okay. I, I, I think at that point I ended up going and seeing um, Ramesh Bausakar in Mumbai. Okay. Oh, some years ago, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Um, well, he's passed away, so maybe you can come in January and uh, spend time with us in India. Yeah, may probably not this year um, because of one thing and another. But um, okay, who knows? You do it every year, I think, don't you? You go every year. Yeah, I beat. I've done it for, for the last twenty-one years. But yeah. for various reasons, it may not go on so many more years, because okay. the ash the ashram where we we've been holding the the retreat, um, the people who 
have built the ashram, they're beginning to want to get it back for them and not giving out to people like me. So oh. it's not completely clear how much longer we can... Uh, you can go on. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Good. Okay. So yeah. something to share from the meditation we did? Um, just um, uh, sort of you, you asked us to sort of focus on the thing that was most prominent. And uh, it was just sensation in the chest. And uh, I focused on that and then just went very quiet, really. Right. right. After that, just just quiet, um, quite still. Um, right. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank you. Okay. So I think... Uh... <clears throat> I think I've met everybody else. <laughs> I think I know everybody else. Anybody I don't know that would like to share something? So, uh, so today's text is, uh, as I was saying, is coming from this new book, which I'm busy um, editing. And um, the topic is complete sensation of mental activities. We want to stop the mental activities. And this is the quote from Bhagwan. People are so obsessed with uh, mental activity that they imagine that by some special kind of mental activity, such as meditation, for instance, the self can be duped into revealing itself. It is not so. Only complete sensation or mental activity can reveal the self. Giving up the personal self or the idea of the seeker's existence should again be unconditional. It should not be driven by any motive. If you feel tempted to ask for a formula for this also, know that there is none. You abandon the personal self, not because you expect or anticipate or want self-realization in return, and then in brackets, in which case you never really abandon it at all. You only absurdly think that you do. But because in that very act of such abandonment, you discover for yourself practically as a direct insight that no such thing as the personal self ever existed, and that no such thing could ever exist. So this is rather a strong um, text because of course, we've been identified with what we've considered to be our personal uh, self, most of us for our whole life. And suddenly this man is coming along and saying, absolute nonsense. How could it ever exist? And anyway, no such thing has ever existed. In other words, he's saying very clearly that what we take as our uh, identity, which can be called ego, is a complete illusion. It has never existed. And of course, when you first hear this, uh, uh, for most people, this is rather shocking, of course, because we've spent 20, 30, 50 years in this wrong identification, believing that we are all those concepts, desires, knowledge, um, everything, everything, basically, that keeps on repeating itself in our life, in our mind is actually an illusion. It's not true. 
So when somebody hears this for the first time, um, we can want to resist it. We can say, no, 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 that's not true. We want to resist that. And so what Ramana Mahashi is suggesting is that we have to investigate this very deeply and clearly. And he offers us uh, what he calls self-inquiry. Uh, he offers us two questions which we can use to investigate and to gradually, uh, if you like, remove the thoughts. So little by little, using his method of self-inquiry, the thoughts, first of all, get less and less and less. And it gives us a chance to um, understand that these thoughts are an illusion and that in fact they're not real so i go back to the first paragraph and we can go through it together and if somebody likes to make a comment about this particular sentence then let's do this hand waving and just share together people are so obsessed with and uh, sorry, uh, obsessed with mental activity, that they imagine that by some special kind of mental activity, such as meditation, for instance, the self can be duped into revealing itself. It is not so. So, um, Basically, the, the self reveals itself when the, the thoughts are disappearing or have disappeared. While there are thoughts, especially certain thought structures that repeat very often, when these are active, then it's not really possible to connect to the self. And by self, for those people who are new to the meeting, I'm referring to uh, the essence, our essence. And maybe surprising for some people, this essence is the same for everyone. There is one essence. And this essence is, um, how can I say, is, is not, not possible to uh, access because of the activity of the mind. If you like the mind and with all its thoughts constantly uh, appearing and disappearing, all these thoughts create a kind of uh, shield or a, a barrier to a direct access to the self. And many of you tonight, I know, have had profound experiences where the thoughts have stopped for a longer time and then something happens and if you're lucky and many of you in fact have experienced this you you come to something which is profoundly touching profoundly touching would somebody like to um share something about this because it could be that it seems that meditation is not something that you should be doing but of course I'm, i've been explaining for a long time that meditation is a way to reduce the thoughts it won't bring you it probably won't bring you to the self but it will it will reduce the flow of thoughts and so um, I'm suggesting that meditation is a very important practice that we can do regularly. And as we do it over a longer period, months or years, we can get a benefit of a quiet mind. And that brings us to the point where we're ready for Ramana Mahashi's idea of self-inquiry. So self-inquiry is a means, meditation is a means, but what he's strongly suggesting is that we have to 
stop the mind, stop the thoughts. You can't stop the mind, but you can stop the thoughts. Somebody like to share something about that? Okay. Okay, Brett. Um, from what I can interpret, I, I think what he's trying to say is there is actually no experiencer. There is no experiencer. And the meditation that we're using to try to quieten these thoughts is just a tool that enabled us, enables us to try to find the self. Um, that's the way I interpret it anyway. I think it's just um, some of it can be ambiguous and interpret, interpreted in different ways. But I, I, from, from my, my personal point of view, it's not rocket science. I think it's just a matter of trying to find that within yourself and using meditation helps to get there um but like bhagavan says it's it's again it's, it's a little bit of a contradiction because you get that you know he's is he is he saying don't meditate in one hand and then saying do meditate in another hand it's, it's trying to that's where the confusion i think might might come in but from from his overall from what you've described there there is no experience there it's all an illusion um it, like the mind doesn't really exist it's just a construct it's a construct of our experiences and and in deemed on us by what others feel that we should be that way um and i think that's probably maybe maybe i'm you know if anybody else wants to have any sort of like input on that i don't know but that's that's the way i interpret it right right well perhaps somebody else will in a moment but i mean um uh, he's definitely not saying don't meditate. Mm, but, yeah. um, for people who were closer to him, who perhaps were living in his ashram, um, they would do a lot of quiet sitting in his energy field. Because, of course, in his energy field, uh, you could get a big benefit just by being in that energy field. And sometimes in these meetings, amazingly, and when, when I first started these Zoom meetings, I didn't expect that it could really work. But in fact, the same energy field seems to go out in this meeting. And so many people are expressing to me that they come to a deep silence. So this is, well, when it first happened, I was surprised, you know, that it was possible through these Zoom meetings. But uh, indeed it is. And so when we meditate together, as we just heard, several people um, came to, to a deep silence. So this is very beautiful that somehow it works just in this Zoom meeting. Yeah, I, I probably, I, I would agree with that. I think it's, there's something in the power of the words, I think as well. Um, I, I think that's quite, profound and and touches you in different ways but yeah I, I agree with that john totally i think it's today what's happened with that meditation at the beginning it, i like i said i was quite surprised um by what happened and it was it was quite peaceful and and very serene and 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 very loving as well i think is, if, if that's the right term of a phrase i don't know but um yeah it's, yeah well, I, th I think we can use love in that way you know? yeah and yeah, I mean, this is actually quite lovely when we come together every week. So I'm planning on doing these meetings regularly every week. And so it's like a, a, a place where we can meet together. And of course, we meet on different levels and for di different reasons, maybe. Mm. So uh, I think that also is a way to bring ourselves quiet. It's just finding that like-minded people that you can actually be with as well. And then that energy can also resonate towards yourself and um, that energy from yourself resonate towards others. Not, not quite right. as powerful as Bhagavan's grace, but you know, there, there is something there, isn't there? I think. Right. Right. Good. It's nice having an English, uh, English Brett on the program now. Yeah. Okay. Would somebody else like to share? 
about uh, what he's saying here about we've got to we've got to see how obsessed we are with the mental and people don't want me to be saying it but i'm advocating that we don't talk so much you know that we can actually uh, realize that if we talk a lot um then we're keeping this activity much more busy than we need to and so choosing to be silent is actually a kind of spiritual practice you can say anybody like to comment Alberto is on the screen. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay, he's doing it properly. But, um, okay, go ahead, Alberto. Alberto, ¿quieres decir algo? Creo que está Alberto, en... if you're living in Canada, do you speak good English, in fact? Alberto, ¿tú hablas algo de inglés, ya que vives en Canadá? No, eh, eh, yo hace varios años vivo en Canadá, pero eh, poco inglés, no lo manejo muy bien. I live in Canada for a few years, but I don't really um, have a good command of English. Sí. Eh, vivo okay. en una comunidad que es multicultural y multidiversa, donde se manejan muchos idiomas. I live in, in a Toronto. diverse community in Toronto, where there are many languages that are spoken. Okay, anyway, go ahead with Spanish because uh, Kyle Asher is enjoying translating. Sí, puedes eh, conversar tranquilamente en español porque yo voy a traducir. Okay, gracias. Eh, yo hace varios años leí un libro que se llama ¿Quién soy yo? Que creo que lo organizó y lo escribió John David. So, a few years ago, I read a book that is called Who Am I? Y he tratado de hacer la autoindagación. And I tried to do the self-inquiry. Eh, la pregunta, ¿quién soy yo? With the question, who am I? Pero a veces eh, se me hace un poco difícil. A veces mi mente se dispersa un poco. But sometimes it gets very, di very difficult for me because my mind starts uh, wandering. Eh, yo, yo quisiera ser más constante, más disciplinado haciendo la autoindagación. I would like to be more disciplined and more perseverant doing self-inquiry. ¿Qué, ¿Qué podría hacer ahí o qué, qué método, qué meditación debo hacer ahí para ser What? más dis, disciplinada con la mente o la mente más disciplinada? Which suggestion do you have for me so I can be more disciplined with this practice and try to bring my mind in focus and stop wondering while I am doing self-inquiry? Well, I think the first thing is to be careful that you're not using this question, who am I, in a sort of intellectual way. La primera cosa es que no debes utilizar esta pregunta de quién soy yo de una manera intelectual. Oh. We, want to, we want to use it to get rid of the thoughts. Queremos utilizar solamente esta pregunta para deshacernos de los pensamientos. So if you look in that book that you found, Who Am I? O Nanya. O si buscas en este libro donde dice quién soy yo. I think it's question 11. Creo que es la pregunta número 11 del libro. Ramana says, when a thought arises, Ramana dice que cuando un pensamiento surge, you ask, yes. to whom does this thought arise? Te preguntas, ¿a quién ha surgido este pensamiento? And because of our identification, the answer is me or I. Y debido a nuestra identificación condicional, eh, la respuesta es yo. 
And then we ask, who is this I? Y después eh, te preguntas, ¿quién soy yo? O, who am I? Okay. O, ¿quién es este yo? And the second question has no answer. Y la segunda pregunta no tiene respuesta. You might say, I'm a man, I come from Colombia, and now I'm living in Canada or Toronto, and I'm living in a diverse community, and my English isn't so good. I mean, you could say all that, but that doesn't help, really. Puedes decir muchas cosas. Puedes decir que eres de Colombia, puedes decir que vives en Canadá, puedes decir que vives en una comunidad, pero nada de estas cosas ayudan realmente. Oh. And we realize that the second question has no answer. En realidad lo que pasa es que nos damos cuenta de que la segunda pregunta no tiene respuesta. Anyway, it has no verbal answer. The answer is silence. No tiene una respuesta verbal porque la respuesta es silencio. So this, this technique of Ramana's, uh, which is called Who Am I? or Self-Inquiry, this is a way to reduce the thoughts until we come to no thoughts. Esta técnica de Ramana Maharshi es una técnica para disminuir los pensamientos y disminuirlos hasta que no haya ningún pensamiento. So we're not really interested in those thoughts. Realmente no nos interesa ninguno de esos pensamientos. We're just interested that the thoughts disappear. Solo nos interesa que los pensamientos desaparezcan. And sometimes when that happens, when the thoughts disappear, y a veces cuando estos pensamientos desaparecen, we can have a glimpse of the self. Podemos ver un destello de nuestro ser. And this, of course, is, is, is wonderful. Y esto obviamente es maravilloso. And this it can encourage us to continue with the self-inquiry in an intense way. Y nos motiva para continuar eh, con nuestra autoindagación en una manera más activa. So, to get the best benefit, this practice is something we should keep going all the time. Para tener los mejores beneficios, esta es una práctica que deberíamos continuar haciendo todo el tiempo. And also regularly every day. Y también regularmente todos los días. And in the beginning, it may not be so easy if you have a busy life. Al principio no te va a ser muy fácil esto, eh, sobre todo si tienes una vida muy eh, ocupada. So in the beginning, it might be um, good to wait for a weekend when you have a couple of days where you can focus completely on the self-inquiry. Al principio es mejor dedicar un fin de semana donde tengas tiempo libre para dedicar a esta autoindagación. But then you can take it into your life, whatever your life is. If you're working during the week, you can still practice this self-inquiry. Luego lo puedes tomar en tu vida diaria, en la cotidianidad, y practicar esta auto-investigación. Naturally, it's much easier to do it sitting with your eyes closed quietly, but it can also work with your eyes open, with things happening uh, that you're your tasks that you have to do every week or every day. Uh, you can wash the dishes, you can do the self-inquiry. Normalmente esto lo vas a hacer con los ojos cerrados en un sitio tranquilo, pero luego lo podrás hacer en tu vida diaria cuando estás en tu trabajo y lo puedes hacer incluso con los ojos abiertos. Okay, good luck. Good luck. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Is there somebody else who would like to share about this? <laughs> okay, Anna, that's good. I would, Madhu, sorry, Anna. Madhu, uh, perfect. I was just thinking I should talk to you. Hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like this um, self-inquiry 
and um, this like being attentive that they, if their thoughts and everything that's like also on the mental level um and then there's another level where there's just silence and very deep quiet so there it's not necessary to do that or maybe it's um like yeah not necessary but then still during the day like thoughts come and blah 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 blah, blah. but right. yeah that's weird i think i think as you're um how can i say as you have a great interest at the moment and that you're having a lot of interesting things happen to you i suggest you try to do it all day long because when you're running around the track or jumping over the high jump or long jump or whatever you're doing, I don't know really. But anyway, when you're doing your sports training, you can also do the self-inquiry. And yeah. if you keep it going through the whole day, this will be much more powerful than doing it sometimes when you feel there's a lot of thoughts. So it's not, it's not exactly a, a, a thought killer, you know. Self-inquiry, yes, in, in a way it operates like a thought killer, but we want to keep the, the mind quiet, not just when there's a lot of thoughts. So um, try to see if, if you get a good result when you, you do this much, um, pretty constantly through the whole day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then it's also important that thoughts are not bad. And when they come up, it's not a problem. Like, because that's what I sometimes think. But what do you think the thoughts are a problem? Really? Yeah, they annoy me. But not really. Right. Because but they can they can only annoy you because you take them as real. Hmm. So in order not to get annoyed by the thoughts, you need to remember that these are, whatever they are, good thoughts or bad thoughts, either way, they're illusions. And so, you know, then you don't have to take them so seriously and then you don't have to really care about whether they're good thought or bad thought. All thoughts we want to, we want to get all the thoughts to stop so that we can live from moment to moment in the self. So when you were here the other day, you were you were a bit concerned about some body jerking and uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. How is that going now? Is it still continuing? So it continued very strongly for like six days. And also it changed. So it was first just like, so my stomach all the time and very painful. And then more uh, my entire upper body and also like it felt like around my heart area, but more to the back. There was just like no space. Um, yeah, and today is the first day where um, it hasn't happened that much. And it also, if it happens, then just very like it's not painful at all anymore. It's just. Yeah, sometimes, but not so much. Okay. I mean, what what touches me is that when I ask you something like this, you have such a lot of awareness about what's going on inside you. This is not completely, um, it's not completely normal. You should um, see that this is a great um, ability you have. Hmm. You see, because this is actually what we need. We need to be self-aware about what's going on, you know, and you have a lot of self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another thing is, I don't want to talk all the time, so, but I will keep it it's short. All right, go on, go on, go on. Um, another thing is that I was, um, I'm going to university all the time, um, or today I met a friend and um oh 
it's um actually it doesn't matter really what's going on but then talking with her in particular felt so exhausting so i don't know how i've always felt like that a bit so then i came home and i just had to take a nap and just had to be completely quiet for an hour and then i felt okay again and I, and my brain was a bit Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, this is this is the this is what happens when you have a young body and a wise old lady inside. You see, so you're hanging out with, you know, young people who have maybe different interests to your interest, and your old the old part of you, the old wise part of you, maybe is not always so relaxed. getting into these conversations with your friends. Yeah. And I'd like to ask you a question because behind you, I see what looks like a guitar case. Mm. Yeah? Yes. I don't remember you exposing your musical attributes. Yeah, I can't play guitar well, but I play the piano. So there's a piano, but I won't Ah. show because it's not tidy. <laughs> <laughs> you can play the piano, so you could also play the harmonium, I think. Yeah. Um, Have you this, tried a harmonium? no, I haven't. Okay. Well, when you next decide to visit us, perhaps somebody can show you the harmonium. And if you can play the piano well, then you can also play the harmonium, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank Good. you. Okay. Okay, so let's go on now to the other part of that paragraph. Giving up the personal self, well, the idea of the seeker's existence should again be unconditional. It should not be driven by any motive. Giving up the personal self or the idea of the seeker's existence, you know, that I exist, you know, I am existing, should again uh, be unconditional. It should not be driven by any motive. He talks about the, the motive to, to become self-realized. He's saying this, this something like, want, okay, I do self-inquiry to get something, to get self-realization. And he doesn't like that. He, he sees that that is maintaining this personal self, you see. And because we're so identified to this personal self, We're constantly wanting to tell us that my personal self is now uh, wanting to find the true self. So this is actually, in one way, you might feel that's very positive because I am deciding to find the personal self. What we don't realize is that that, that at the same time is um, reminding us, us of the personal self, which we anyway are very identified with. So this, this is uh, something that has to be looked at because um, in the end, what, what Ramana is suggesting is that the thoughts have to stop or mental activity has to stop. And he's using, he's offering us this self-inquiry, what he calls self-inquiry in order to do that, but He's also saying that, you know, the fastest way to do that is a deep, unconditional surrender. I mean, I don't know whether I told you this, but at the same time as the um, Bishara, the self-inquiry book from this old material, we are also doing in the same time another book, which is titled uh, Surrender. 
So we're doing actually two books, but we can't publish two books at the same time. So uh, we've chosen uh, to publish first the self-inquiry book. But it's very clear using reading both this material that he's very much advocating to people who are perhaps you could say um, more advanced speakers. He's he's to those kind of people. He's he's encouraging them to make a deep surrender. And of course, the people who came to his ashram to visit him and then didn't leave because they couldn't leave. They just stayed. This is the kind of people who later, after some 10 or 20 years living around Ramana, these are the people who in fact became self-realized and started to share what they understood with, with new people who came to the ashram. So um, self-inquiry, this technique of asking uh, the questions that I was just talking to Alberto about, this is like second level. And third level is that if you can't do um, those first two levels, then he says, okay, you can do meditation, you can do yoga, you can do um, chanting of uh, God's name. You can do these other, other kinds of practices. He never says, he never says one is better than the other. He's very, um, delicate how he deals with each person that comes to talk to him. But what is clear from the material that, in fact, from his point of view, there is a hierarchy of, uh, if you like, spiritual practices. And uh, as you know, in our community, we start the day with yoga and then we have meditation and then we have breakfast because that's also important to keep the body going. And then we are doing the self-inquiry exercise through the day. So that's, of course, very intensive. And you may not be able to do that in your own lives. But I think it's clear that if, uh, if, if how can I say, it? it's clear that you do the right thing for you in your own situation and in your own experience. For example, uh, a few days ago, I was talking to Carly, who now I think has been maybe three years, more or less three years living in the community. And we were discussing how many things have changed for her when she first came to the community and how she is now, I would say is very different. Maybe she could confirm this to everybody. Would you like to confirm this? Uh, Carly? Yes. Is it true? Yeah. Very true. Very yeah. true. Very different. Um, in many ways. Okay. Do you want to tell us some of these ways? I mean, when we were talking oh, the other day, I, I could remember that when you first came, you were very much kind of caught up in your family. And even now, after mm. a few years, you're still fairly caught up. But in the early days, you were very caught up with your friends, with your family, uh, brother, sister, parents, other people probably. And um, how can I say, you were very, I mean, that was very much part of your regular daily life. Is that right? And now after two or three years, two and a half years, I think, now it's, it, you see the possibility. It doesn't mean you stop loving your parents if you don't think about them every day 10 times. Mm. Yeah, this was one, one thing. Um, it's still there, but I mean, when I came, for me, it was basically what was much stronger. It was just the feeling of I cannot connect to anybody because I, it was, for me, not easy to connect to myself. So I was very isolating myself all the time. And 
like I was always for my feeling I was always alone I was always crying alone somewhere and <laughs> yeah it was uh, just a lot of a lot going on um I think now nobody would know that you're the one who was crying in the corner you know alone and kind of unloved well back in the days they also nobody really knew because I was always doing it alone <laughs> right so right. um yeah, but it was, I just didn't have a clue about all these things about self inquiry and um, this being not caught up in this personal thing. Now it's yeah. much more easier to connect to, to something out of this personal. And there's also more, more longing to be free of that, but Right. yeah it's always still the same things which comes but from i can see them from different perspectives now and from different with more um, distance right right well that's that's a very good um how can i say um, a good uh, advancement in the last two years or so and I think now I'm talking to you that you're much more aware that you don't want to keep going back into that kind of lovely stuff that you used to be very involved in. You don't need to keep going back to that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, this has changed. Right. It's still not, still not easy, but... Um... It's easy. just everything is getting more clear. It's just everything is getting more clear. And... Right, right, right. Okay, okay, good. <clears throat> Anybody else like to jump in? Just a mere wave of your hand and... Okay, Jaya. Okay, go ahead. Ich, ich würde gern Deutsch sprechen. It's Hört okay, yeah. 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 Indira, Indira will translate. Yeah. Yeah. Also, bei mir war es diesmal so, also heute, dass ich die, deine Darstellung über die Self-Inquiry viel besser verstehen konnte, also wie auf einer tieferen Ebene. For me it was today that I could understand how you explained the Self-Inquiry today. I could um, receive it on a much deeper level. Good, yeah. I mean, that's exactly my own experience editing this text from Ramana. Yeah, this is auch meine eigene Erfahrung, während ich diesen Text von Ramana editiere. What, what, I can, what I can realize is that he was sitting, you know, on his couch day by day, and people would arrive in the ashram and come and, uh, and sit with him and ask him some questions. Also es war ja so, was ich sehen kann, er saß im Ashram auf seinem Sofa und die Leute kamen so nach und nach rein und stellten ihre Fragen. And um, I have the feeling from now editing quite a few of these dialogues. Und mein Gefühl ist es, nachdem ich jetzt so einige Dialoge editiert habe. That he was um, on some level, he was Uh, feeling the um, level of understanding the person has. Das ist so ein Gefühl, also diesen, diese Ebene des Verstehens und den Level des Verstehens von den Leuten erfüllen konnte. And also maybe he could energetically feel the possibility or the potential of that person. Und er konnte auch energetisch vielleicht die Kapazität dieser 
Person erspüren. And uh, with some people, he would continue a dialogue for a much longer time than he seemed to with other people. Und mit manchen hat er einen viel längeren Dialog geführt als mit anderen. And so I noticed that in this nearly 200 pages where he was dialoguing primarily about self-inquiry. Und mir war aufgefallen, dass in diesen 200 Seiten, wo er hauptsächlich über die Selbsterfahrung spricht, he brings in um, sort of different aspects, more details, dass, you can say. Dass er unterschiedliche Aspekte da reinbringt, detailliertere. For example, in this text tonight, zum Beispiel den Text heute Abend, he's saying how um, it doesn't help if you have a desire, if you have a wanting to come to self-realization. Sagte, es hilft überhaupt nicht, wenn du so einen Wunsch, so ein Verlangen hast, Selbstrealisation zu erfahren, dahin zu kommen. It's a kind of paradox. On the one hand, probably most of the people who traveled from Europe to visit him, it would have been a very big uh, journey to come and visit him in his um, hermitage in the, in, in the forest, in the jungle. He was living in a kind of jungle. Das ist natürlich ein Paradox, weil die meisten Leute, die aus Europa sich aufgemacht haben, um ihn da im Dschungel äh, zu besuchen. I could imagine he had a great respect for these people that maybe spent several months coming from Europe to, to visit him. Könnte ich mir vorstellen, dass er einen großen Respekt vor den Leuten hatte, die vielleicht mehrere Monate gebraucht haben, um diese Reise ähm, zu machen, um ihn zu besuchen. And so I think this, this book that we're editing and we're going to, I hope, print it before the new year. Und ich hoffe, dass dieses Buch, was wir jetzt editieren und hoffentlich vom neuen Jahr noch herausbringen, there is much more detail uh, than you can find in this little booklet, Nanya, or Who Am I? Da ist natürlich viel mehr Detail drin, als man in diesem kleinen Büchlein Nanya finden kann. Wer bin ich? I mean, originally Nanya was starting, this little booklet started with some questions that Ramana was asked when he lived on the mountain in the cave. Uh, somebody came and asked him some questions. Dieses kleine Büchlein Nanya, das wurde ja zu der Zeit, äh, kommt das ja her, als Ramana auf dem Berg lebte und jemand zu ihm kam und ihm Fragen stellte. He was probably, I think, around 20, 21. Er war damals so 20, 21 Jahre alt. So he'd already been, you know, in this um, big, big change inside him for three or four years. Das heißt, er war da schon drei, vier Jahre in dieser großen Veränderung, die in ihm vorging. And, and he had many uh, years of, of silence. Und er hatte viele Jahre in Stille gelebt. He kind of wandered around on the, on the Arunachala mountain alone, er ging, day by day. Er ging täglich auf diesem Berg Arunachala umher, allein. So when when the man came to ask him some questions, he was, wasn't speaking at that time. Und als dieser Mann kam und ihm Fragen stellte, da sprach er gar nicht zu dieser Zeit. So with a stick, he wrote the answers in the sand. Also schrieb er mit einem Stock die Antworten in den Sand. And the man who was asking the questions, he was also not writing the answers. Und der Mann, der die Fragen stellte, der hat sich die Antworten auch nicht aufgeschrieben. So this kind of dialogue was, must have been very simple. Also muss dieser Dialog ja sehr, sehr einfach gewesen sein. And then some years later, the man who asked the questions. Und einige Jahre später hat der Mann, der die Fragen gestellt hatte. He, he wrote a biography about Ramana. Er schrieb über Ramana eine Biografie. And he put in some of the questions and answers. Und da hat er dann einige Fragen und Antworten hinzugefügt. 
It was just a small booklet. Das war nur so ein kleines Büchlein. And it was given, you know, you could get a copy if you came to the ashram. The ashram would give you a copy of this small booklet. Und wenn man den Ashram besuchte, bekam man so ein kleines, dieses kleine Büchlein. And then over the years, more questions and answers were added. Über die Jahre wurden dann mehr Fragen und Antworten hinzugefügt. And I think it was in the 20s, Ramana himself edited that booklet. Und ich glaube, es war in den 20ern, als Herr Ramana selbst dieses Buch editiert hat. But even then, it was still very simple. Aber dann, sogar da war es immer noch sehr einfach. And once, once this book is published, you'll be able to see the different quality in the small booklet and in this uh, new uh, book that we're, we're editing. Und wenn es einmal jetzt veröffentlicht wird, unser neues Buch, dann wirst du auch den Unterschied der Qualität entdecken. Dein Büchlein und so für ein Buch, was wir editieren. So, for example, tonight I'm reading this passage where uh, that you can't, you, you should abandon the personal self, but not in some, an, uh, sorry, anticipation that you want self-inquiry. I'm uh, sorry, you want self-realization. Also man soll ja das persönliche Selbst quasi aufgeben, aber nicht, äh, um deswegen Selbstrealisation erlangen zu wollen. So that, that statement is not in Nanya. Also diese Aussage, die gibt es im Nanya nicht. And um, the fact that he's saying here that you have to have a direct insight. Und er sagt ja hier, du musst eine direkte Erkenntnis haben. The personal self has never existed. It's a das illusion. Das persönliche Selbst hat nie existiert. Das ist einfach eine Illusion. And this, this is in the pamphlet, if you can understand what he says there. It is there. Also das steht in diesem kleinen Büchlein. But perhaps not so clearly that everybody can understand that. Aber vielleicht nicht so deutlich, dass jeder das verstehen kann. And then here we also have this statement that no such thing could ever exist. Hier gibt es ja auch so ein Statement, wo er sagt, dass so etwas nicht existieren kann. So, so he's suggesting in this particular dialogue he was having with somebody who was visiting that day. Also in diesem Dialog, wo, uh, den er hat mit jemandem, der an diesem Tag zu Besuch kommt. He was suggesting that you have to investigate about this personal self. Also da sagt er, du musst dieses persönliche Selbst wirklich ähm, untersuchen. And there's no formula to do that. Und es gibt da keine Formel, wie man das tun kann. Even though in the small pamphlet there is what we've come to know as self-inquiry, two questions, which I was explaining to Alberto. Obwohl es in diesem Pamphlet natürlich uh, so diese zwei Fragen der Selbsterforschung erklärt werden. Okay. Any comments, comments about that? Hast du irgendeinen Kommentar zu? Ähm, bei mir ist es so, dass ich zwar, das ist bei mir so, dass ich einerseits schon den Wunsch habe, ähm, mein, das Selbst zu realisieren, aber es ist eher so ein Wunsch, den ich gar nicht greifen kann. Das ist so, ist so ein, ach, so ein ich kann es gar nicht sagen, wie so ein Sog oder so ein, ja, so with me, there is the desire somehow to want to gain self-realization, but it is uh, very faint. It's something very, it's not, you can't grasp it really. Right, right. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, the reality is that all the people probably who are in tonight's meeting. Die Realität ist, dass ja alle, die heute Abend hier bei diesem Meeting dabei sind. I would hope everybody has a realization. Also hat wahrscheinlich jeder den Wunsch nach Selbstrealisation. But he's suggesting that if this is, how can I say, if this is a kind of business deal, you know, I'll do a lot of self-inquiry if you give me self-realization or it will lead to self-realization. He's saying that doesn't really work. Aber er sagt, es geht nicht so wie so eine Geschäftsbeziehung. Ne? So, ich mache jetzt ganz viel Selbstrealisation, äh, ganz viel Selbsterforschung und dafür bekomme ich dann Selbstrealisation. Das funktioniert nicht. Nein. And it doesn't work because it, it in a way pushes us back into the personal cell that now wants to get self-realization. Und es funktioniert nicht, weil uns genau diese Haltung zurück in dieses Persönliche mich gesenkt, nämlich dass diese Person Selbstrealisation möchte. It's a kind of subtle situation, which is a kind of uh, paradox, you can say. Eine sehr subtile Situation, die quasi wie so ein Paradox ist. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Reality is that probably if we were not interested in self-realization, we would never connect to Ramana and we would never understand about self-inquiry. And in fact, we would never even understand that the personal self can never exist. We wouldn't know all that. Also, wenn wir kein Interesse an Selbstrealisation hätten, dann würden wir uns ja nie mit der Selbsterforschung oder Ramana verbinden oder irgendwie verstehen, dass dieses persönliche äh, Ich eigentlich überhaupt nicht existiert. Many spiritual people are content if they can feel their mind is becoming more open. Sorry, their, their heart is becoming more open. Also viele spirituelle Leute, die sind schon wirklich glücklich, wenn sich ihr Herz einfach mehr öffnet. People perhaps who um, are going more the way of Bhakti, where they enjoy to sing mantras, for example. Und die, die eher so einen Bhakti-Weg gehen, zum Beispiel die äh, es mögen Mantren zu singen, sehr viel. And maybe they're not really caring if their mind is an illusion or not an illusion. Und ihnen vielleicht egal ist, ob ihr Verstand eine Illusion ist oder nicht. They are motivated by the by the feeling of their heart opening. Sie sind einfach motiviert bei diesem Gefühl, dass ihr Herz sich öffnet. And of course, all these different aspects they they come together. You can say. Und diese ganzen unterschiedlichen Aspekte, die kommen quasi zusammen. And, and as he's saying, there is no. Um, how can I say? Where are we? Oh. Anyway, there's no formula. Yeah, and wie er sagt, es gibt da jetzt keine Formel für. I mean, what, what we can read in this small pamphlet, Nanya, or Who Am I, it feels like a formula. You know, you, you okay. ask this question and you ask that question and then something happens. So it feels like a formula, but he's, he's denying that. He's, he's refusing that. Also in diesem kleinen Büchlein fühlt sich das ja so ein bisschen an wie eine Formel, aber er verneint das, er lehnt das ab. Ich, ich denke, also für mich, ich denke, ich muss das erleben, also dieses Fragen und dieses äh, Untersuchen, nicht nur vom Kopf her, sondern spüren und erleben, richtig, ja, voll und ganz. I have the feeling I have to experience it, these questions, not from the mind, just uh, yeah, right. just to experience it completely. Right, right. And I mean, this is a mature understanding of what seems to be a formula. Yeah, this is ein reifes Verstehen davon, was erstmal so aussieht, als ob das so eine Formel ist. Mm -hmm. 
And we have to be also careful that we are not just doing a kind of intellectual exercise. Wir müssen auch aufpassen, dass wir das nicht einfach zu einer intellektuellen Übung machen. And that, that's not going to help very much. Also das ist nicht sehr hilfreich. Okay, okay. So maybe somebody else like to share something? Prabhati. Yeah. Uh, I can say um, since this uh, strong presence is all the time there, this this wanting that the big big bang will come is gone. So right. With, with, without doing something for this. Right. And right. This, this presence is then you don't want to come somewhere or to get something or some, something like enlightenment. This I could share from, from now. Right, right. You were talking a lot about presence and I always said, yes, yes, but probably this is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we... I, I never know what it was. <laughs> Right, but this is very beautiful, of course, because as soon as we know in one moment, once we have a glimpse, you know, I talk often about glimpses. Once you've had a glimpse, we have other people in the meeting tonight who have had glimpses. And when you've had a glimpse, then everything changes, really. Yeah. And, as you, and as you say, any desire you had, uh, just disappears mm. and so this it this is suggesting a more mature understanding and so this is often there there's a sort of constant paradox going on you know yeah this is a so, different you know? mm. this paradox but, yeah, in, in, in one way it's, it is, but, you know, the, this recent, um, this recent new, a kind of slightly new space you, you, you're living in at the moment, you also have to see that this is part of a certain kind of flow that happens because you made a commitment some years ago to leave, leave the outside uh, society life leave your mother who you are very much taking care of and probably very identified with and you had other family you had your own children grown up children and to leave all this and move to a community and then in this community in the beginning probably uh you know you had this desire you know, i've given up so much then I want to get something and I'd like to get, you know, presence or something, self-realization, uh, you know. But then that becomes something of a barrier, actually. And yeah. now after a number of years living in this community, having made that decision now quite a few years ago, it's no longer such a kind of particular desire you have. Yeah, and I, I can also say through meditation where the mind got quite more quiet and also this desire for something it became the life became more ordinary it doesn't need to be something special happening this right. just grows through this i can say in my case I just... right right well this thing about special and ordinary i mean I can remember uh, living quite a few years with this idea that I could get something very special, you know, and I was the kind of guy who was in a way looking for special stuff, you know, and when I would have come to Osho and he was telling every day about 
becoming ordinary, I might have pissed off and uh, not continued, you know? So in the early days, he always made it sound really amazing. If you're really, really lucky, this thing called enlightenment, you would come to enlightenment. And this kept me every, every day meditating. It kept me every day going to his meetings for years, you know, many, many years. And um, the effect of all that it, it wasn't in a way completely honest because he knew that enlightenment is not special. Enlightenment is that you come to who you really are, which is completely ordinary. And so enlightenment is not about becoming, you know, the gold medal with angels coming down and sitting under a special tree and whatever it is, you know, it's, it's not like that. It's actually that you can be content um, with simple things because gradually you realize whether it rains or whether it, the sun shines. Today I was out in, in, in a trip and I was looking at the sky. It was so gray, almost black sky. And my first impulse was to feel like, oh God, I need to go back to Spain where the sky is blue, you know, and the sun shines and blah, 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 blah. But then another element was that it uh, reminded me of England because England was always gray and even worse than gray, black. And, you know, in a way I survived all that, you know, through my whole childhood. And I can remember I had quite a good time. And that gray sky must have been there most of my life. And so I don't have to make it into something that's um, inferior to the blue sky, if you like, if that makes sense. Because whether it's the blue sky or the gray black sky, um, it's not about looking for this special something. We can accept the gray sky, we can accept this, the, the blue sky. Yeah, this is what I also experienced, that this very normal thing is so present. So this is what changed so strongly. No? That if, even this normal things like hanging the washing laundry and cooking the meals and even go to bed is so amazingly present. No? This is, makes it so, so jo joyful. No? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, but but as you're speaking, I think there there is um, you know there's a maturity, there's a new understanding maybe that's been coming to you over some time. Now it's arrived. Good, good. Okay, let's see what's going on here the time oh it's nearly 10 o'clock um so we'll be finishing soon some last comment okay krishna so krishna has a rather nice life he's living under the blue sky every day and he lives around around him is this palm paradise garden so uh, he has rather a good time, I think. Is that right? Yeah, very good time. You 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 asked the question uh, for the change, and and this is what I can realize so amazing. In the beginning, when I came to now this this wide range, and I I see so much more from this life. I. I it's nourishing so much more the day, the work, whatever happens. There is, it's, it's such a big change that I almost can't uh, believe it, that I almost can't. I, I never thought of something like this could happen to me, never. And, and I also feel a support here in, in in the community living here is such a big support. It's such a natural big support for me that sometimes I really could cry because I don't know how how 
how I can earn this or how this could happen to me in the world. Well, I think it's the language like, of the the language of Open Sky House is 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 tears. Yeah. <laughs> A bit of laughter as well, maybe, but tears and laughter. Tears of joy and tears of uh, and laughter of whatever, you know. Yes. <laughs> but it's very beautiful that this thing which we can't quite see, you know, I do this and I get that. It's not really like that. There is some some sort of subtle process going on all the time, and at the same time, it's kind of invisible. Uh, and are you still doing your? Oh, sorry. Are you still doing your home um, home um, homework? We we I set you some homework. Yeah, that changed a lot. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, it okay. changed very much. Yeah. Okay. Good. I can't understand it really, but I simply do, or I simply do what uh, follow. What you suggested and uh, good, good. It changes, yeah. Everything. Oh, I think I'm getting tired now. Okay, I think we're gonna finish now. Thank you, Krishna, for that. Thank you for the nice meeting. I enjoy it again. And uh, I already have some interesting text for next week. And um, thank you for those of you who in the Sangha group put up with my uh, pushy email that I sent out. And it's nice to see you join the meeting tonight. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. <laughs>